In this video, we're going to have a look at an overview of this new feature that just came out, the on object interaction. I'm going to show you how to enable it, how it works, and where you'll find your typical formatting options. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the on object interaction is a new feature, which is part of Microsoft's overall push for this office like experience. So if you've ever created bar charts or any charts in PowerPoint, you know, this kind of format or this view will be very familiar for you because it's exactly how it would work here in Power BI with just a little bit of a difference. So the idea with this new on object interaction is that you will have your kind of static options at the ribbon. So you'll be able to choose your visuals I mean anything else that is static up there and then anything else that is dynamic things like you know titles or subtitles dividers things like this um, which is dynamic based on what object you have selected will be next to the object instead of the format pane so let me show you exactly how these all work so here we have a report and I've just imported some data set here so that we can play around with it and then as well as some charts to start working with. And the first thing that you'll need to know is that the on object interaction is a preview feature at the moment, which means that you'll need to opt in and enable it for you to use it. So what you'll need to do is go to options here and then under preview features. Here at the bottom, you'll see that you can enable on object interaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close RBI and reopen that report that we were just in. And we will see, hopefully, the new on object interaction in the report. So now we're back here in this report here. And you probably have noticed a few things already. The first thing is that the format or the pane here for our visuals is gone, um, which is now here on the ribbon. So you're able to select your visuals here from the ribbon because these are kind of kind of static way to uh, static options for you to add visuals. You will see that on the right hand side as well, um, you can close panes like this and you can just have more space for your page, which is which is great under view. You will still have your different pane options here, like your filter pane, your data pane, uh, your format. Um, but what you'll notice is as I click them, instead of stacking them on top of each other, like a pane after a pane after a pane, it creates this sort of pane switching options here on the right hand side. So instead of basically bombarding you with all of these different panes, which in my experience, when it happens, it kind of makes your report preview uh, your report page smaller. Um, instead of that, you kind of have this ability to switch panes one at a time, which I guess it's this office like experience where you can you know, close your pane if you don't need it or have one active pane at a time, which I think it's is great. Like I, I prefer this rather than the kind of stacking method. So now what you'll notice from here is when you clicked a visual, you will have these two options here on the left. You have the build option, which allows you to add data within your report. And you have this add visual, which lets you add or remove certain elements within your visual. Now we'll look at these two buttons in a second, but I want you to pay attention to this new uh, way to kind of edit your, your report, right? So at the moment we have this visual selected. If you double click in this report, and at the moment, by the way, if you hover over these elements and if you click it, it will do the cross filtering, cross highlighting, as you would expect. If you uh, right click and uh, click format or double click, what it will do is it will go into this sort of edit mode, which basically instead of having the interaction, you can now interact with elements directly into this report and edit them there. So for example, if you want to change the title here, you simply double click, which is more intuitive than going to the format pane. You can just type here total sales. Same thing with different elements like here, for example, a sales, you can edit that. You can edit things like, you know, your charts here. Just note that um, although we can make all of these changes here on objects, a lot of the more advanced features like, for example, conditional formatting will still be in the format pane. So for example, if you wanted to change the colors of this, uh, this bar, um, instead of going to you still need to go to the format pane. But what's interesting is that as I make those selections, the format pane kind of focuses on that as well. So it 
auto scrolls to where you want to be, which I think I haven't really tried it uh, so much, but it sounds and it looks like it will kind of increase my speed when it comes to kind of looking for settings and formatting options. If you, whenever you make a selection in the visual itself, um, let's say for example, you have uh, different visuals that overlap and you might accidentally click one, but you actually meant the other one. When you right click on this uh, visual, you'll see that you will have an option to choose which visual or which part or which element of the visual you're actually wanting to select. Is it the sum of sales line? Or maybe you're looking to select the vertical grid line because maybe we want to change the color uh, of that grid. So that allows you to get a bit more finer control over what you're selecting within this feature. As you noticed, you had this right click option, which is contextual to which element you are um, currently selecting. So at the moment, if I right click on the line chart, you can do things like, you know, add labels or add other things based on what you can add in this element. And that works for a lot of the different visuals and elements and they are contextual. So for example, if we right click, uh, let's say this, uh, this line chart or, or this, this X axis, you will have different options contextual to what that element is, which is really cool. So if you're done with uh, using this kind of, you know, formatting a way, uh, once you're done and you're happy with what you've done, uh, to untoggle it, you simply just deselect the visual and it will just go back to how it used to work. So the, the normal cross highlighting, cross filtering. Now let's move on to the build parts of the on object interaction. So this is where you sort of add your data and choose the visuals that you want to use for your visual. So you'll see a few options here. So you have a way to choose which visual you want to use, similar to how you would normally do it in the format visual, except that it's now next to the actual visual itself. You have your different wells here. By default, this will be not here. So you will simply just have a simplified view here like this, so just the type, which is a list. So it allows you to add data and uh, based on the data that you add in these wells, Power BI will automatically suggest what visual is appropriate or what is a good visual to visualize this type of data. It will even try to suggest to which wells you might want to add it. So here, as you can see, we don't assign the, the data within the kind of X or Y axis wells. It automatically does it for us. However, if you want to have that finer control like you did before, you just toggle it off and then you have access to all of those different wells. So like the format modes uh, in the visual, you also have the ability to right click on a lot of these things. So for example, if you wanted to change the aggregation type of this Y axis at the moment, it's summed and maybe you want to change it to an average, you simply right click and it will give those contextual options for you. Beyond this, there are some additional settings that you can customize to change the experience for yourself based on your preference. So you'll find these new options under uh, the options menu. So if I just open it quickly and we go to report settings, you'll see there are two new um, options for you. So just a visual type by default. Um, I would probably just turn this off. And then this one in the build a visual menu always show all of the visualization types. Now this is a preference. So either you see all of the visuals that you can choose from or just get the ones that are recommended by, uh, by Power BI. So you can toggle that on or off. So that's a kind of good way to change how uh, your experience is for the on object interaction. So now let's move on to the add part of this, which allows you to add or remove certain parts of your kind of your visuals. So things like title, titles, X and Y axis, your titles. You can even add things like analysis kind of visuals here, like trend lines or forecast, which uh, is a pretty good and quick way to kind of add elements within your visual. So that's, that's pretty handy. If you can't find what you want to add here, you still have the option to go back to the format pane and add them yourself. So speaking of the format pane, you'll see that it's a little bit different now. Well, it, it looks a lot similar than how it was before. So you will still find your typical things like your, you know, your drop down, collapse, expand, um, grouped in the same way as before. But you'll notice that they've kind of merged both the visuals as well as the other analyzed stuff here, like uh, the trend lines, reference lines. So anything contextual to, to the visual that you have, instead of having a separate analyze your data tab, it's all now in this visual tab. So you can kind of modify them all here. There's also another tab here, the properties tab, which has a few more sort of advanced options. Now I didn't understand why it's 
not just part of the visuals tab but if you're looking for things like you know header icons or tooltips you'll find them in this in this tab the last thing that i noticed is when i was looking for the drill through options which uh, you won't find here because it doesn't sort of make sense here but i found it actually in the page information down here so uh, options like the drill through or changing your page type into a tooltip you will be able to kind of do it through here and that's really it for this video i hope you are now a little bit more familiar with this new on object interaction in power bi thanks for watching as usual give this video a like if you found it useful give it a dislike if you didn't so to do better for next time ask your questions in the comment section box below so i can help you and you can help others if you really like this video we have a patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos